when you stretch it will take you to higher ground. Listen to me, maybe you've stumbled, maybe you've fallen along the way, maybe you've even stopped. I want you to know something. Listen to me, the devil is a liar, no more excuses. Just get back up and start stepping again. Can I get an amen? Hey, thanks for joining us here at Rescue Church. We believe that we are here to reach and rescue people with God's love. If you have questions or want to know more about us, visit us at rescuechurch.org. And we'd love for you to stay connected wherever you are by downloading our Rescue Church app. And don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. With that being said, let's check out the newest message. Hallelujah. How many guys know there's nothing like the love of Jesus? Amen. Nothing like the love of God. His perfect love casts out all fear. Come on, somebody. His love is here right now. His presence is here. Lord, we just thank you, Father. You're in this place, Father. We thank you, Lord. Fathers, we lift up the name of Jesus, Father. We lift up praises, Father. We lift up your name, Father. The name above every name, Father. We thank you right now, Father God. Lord, you speak, you minister, you touch each and every heart in this house, Father. We thank you, Lord that you have greater things in store for our life, Father. We thank you, Father. No weapon formed against us shall prosper, Father. We thank you that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world, Father. We thank you, Lord, when we keep our eyes on you, Lord. We shall not be shaken. We shall not be moved, Father. We thank you, Lord, that, Father God, that you've set us, Father God, Lord, in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you want to elevate us, Father, from faith to faith to glory. Glory to glory, Father. We thank you, Lord, that Lord, that there's a God on our side, Father. If God be for us, who can be against us, Father? We thank you, Lord, Father God. Your name is great. And your word says it's the name above every name, Father. And we thank you right now, Lord, that, Father, the things that we've carried, Father, things that maybe, Father God, that have been trying to weigh us down, Father God, that they're bowing down to the name of Jesus. And I say, lose them in the name of Jesus. The people, Father, walking in the freedom, Father God, that we've been given in Christ Jesus. And we declare this day, Father God, Lord, that we are blessed because of the name of Jesus. Amen. Woo! Amen. Amen. I don't know about you. Listen to me. I still need a little more room. Can I get an amen? Because we're stretching. Come on, somebody. How many of you are still feeling the stretch? Amen. It just means you're growing. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. just means you're growing. Come on, somebody. I mean, you guys know when you're a little kid and you, you just start to grow and you get those growing pains. But how many guys know the, the, the growth is to take you upward? Amen. It's to take you from a child, come on, somebody, to an adult. How many of y'all feel like you're growing up? Amen. Hallelujah. And so uh, I just want to just share a couple things real quickly. I want to say uh, happy St. Uh, Patty's Day. St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick was actually a Christian evangelist, for some of y'all who may or may not know. And I've tried the pinch, you grow an inch, it didn't work on some people, but anyways, it was fun. Hallelujah. I ain't talking about my wife, why y'all looking at her? Come on, somebody. And so, but she's, she's big on the inside. Come on, somebody. I tell you, my little girl's big on the inside with Jesus. Hallelujah. And so, uh, this is going to be our finale. This is the, uh, the uh, final um, in our series called it's in the stretch um, I just do want to I want to say one thing before I take off um, I want you guys to know my prayer is this uh, as your pastor and welcome to those who are online can we welcome those who are online watching right now too I want to forget about you those numbers are growing hallelujah God is so good but I, I do I do want you to know this as, as your pastor I want you to know my prayer is this that that this message or this series of messages, it's going to extend, it's going to extend beyond, beyond part six. It's going to extend beyond this final message from behind the pulpit. I, I pray that it, that it extend beyond the pulpit into your lives and then from your lives out there into the world and that you guys would be living examples. And uh, the apostle Paul put it this way, that we're supposed to be living epistles living out the word and my prayer is that you will live it out there it's not just something that you you you, you you've increased your capacity to receive now you've received all this word what are you going to do with it come on somebody now you got to exercise your faith you've been fueled to exercise your faith and carry it out into the world and live live the gospel live the gospel live the gospel 
live the gospel in front of people and let people truly see the change that God has done in your life. Come on, somebody. And so that is my prayer. I do want to say that up front. Um, <clears throat> and so I, I believe that's happening. I do. I believe that's happening with all my heart, and I believe it will continue to happen. Amen. Let me just share a couple things with you. I want you to remember. I want you to remember what I've shared with you. I've shared with you that you can, you can start lower and go higher if you will stretch. I share with you that you can do more with less if you will stretch. I've shared that you can learn more and grow more if you will stretch. I've shared that you can boost your appetite for more of Jesus if you will stretch. I've shared that you can increase your spiritual intake if you will stretch. I've shared that you can reach more God-given goals and dreams and get there faster if you will stretch. And I've shared that you can grow in your purpose, calling, and destiny if you will stretch. And I've shared that you can go from where you are to where God wants you to be if you will stretch. And I've shared that you can make more room for a double portion of Jesus if you will stretch. Hallelujah. Tell the person next to you, it's in the stretch. Pastor, you've shared all that. I sure have. I've shared all that. Actually, everything I've shared turned into two pages, so I, I stopped right there. Amen. And so, yes, I've shared all that in that series. And so a lot of times I'll repeat certain things because I've learned that, listen, if you want to outperform, you got to overinform. As we don't always capture it the first time. Sometimes it speaks louder the second time. Can I get an amen? To stretch means this. It means to spread, lengthen, or extend without tearing or breaking. To reach forth. To make demands on one's capacity or resources. Or to make the maximum use of something. Hopefully you guys have written that down and I want you guys to own it and continue to live it. Can I get an amen? In other words, here's what I want to share with you as we get into this uh, finals message in the series. I believe according to this definition, I want to point out one other thing. Um, A spiritual stretch is a process for spiritual growth. Bottom line. In other words, how many of you guys know a spiritual stretch is a process for spiritual growth? Let me give you a few examples. A few examples would be when you stretch, it shifts you out of your weakness into God's strength. Remember, I will say that again. A spiritual stretch is a process for spiritual growth. Somebody say growth. Listen to me. Another example. When you stretch, listen to me, your worldly appetite goes. Come on, somebody. And your spiritual hunger grows. Only if you're in the stretch. Only if you're in the stretch. That's good stuff. When you stretch, you learn to live for less of you and more of him. When you stretch, you grow beyond your current level. So how many guys know? So God can take you to the next level. When you stretch, it will increase your passion, your passion, your passion to pursue God's plan, God's purpose, God's calling, and God's destiny for your life. That only happens in the stretch. The stretch is not to to, to tear you or to break you. The stretch is to grow you up. It's to grow you up. It's to grow you up. It's to take you places you've never gone before in God. And I don't know about you. I want to go to those places. I want to be who God wants me to be. I do not want to be the same Paul I was yesterday, today. Come on, somebody. Come on. I want to be who God wants me to be today. And the next, and the next, and the next. Amen. And so this morning, this morning, I, I, I don't put the title up yet. I want you guys to know this is what I heard the Lord say to me as I was preparing uh, this meal or this message. The Lord, the Lord told me, this, he says, this is what I want you to say. And I don't normally get these specific words like this. Normally I just get an unction. But I heard the Lord tell me this is what I need to share with you guys, to, to share with you guys today. He said, tell them this he said tell my people this he said tell them it won't be easy but it's worth it come on y'all gotta give the lord a shout up in here amen i know that was subtle but listen to me i want you to know something this is what the lord said and some of y'all listen to me just just in the title the title alone's got some power in it it won't be easy but it's worth it tell your neighbor it won't be easy but it's worth it It won't be easy to stretch sometimes, but it's worth it. Come on, somebody. It won't be easy. It won't be easy sometimes to stretch in your reading time. It won't be easy. It won't be easy sometimes to to increase, to increase more word in your life. 
It won't be easy to, 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 to stretch a little, to stretch a little bit and read my Bible more. But it will be worth the increase of hunger and the increase of growth in my life. It won't be easy, but it's worth it. Come on, somebody. It won't be easy sometimes to turn up the praise when you're in traffic and somebody cuts you off. Yeah, yeah, okay, y'all felt me on that one right there. (laughs) On your way to church. Come on, somebody. It won't be easy to praise them when somebody sits in your supposedly seat in church. (laughs) And I never never have figured that out since I first got saved. I've never understood that. I'll be honest with y'all. Even even before I even started serving the Savior, I've never understood that. Never understood. To me, listen to me, listen to me, there is no such thing. Can I get an amen? That should never bother you. If somebody sits in my seat, I'm just grateful that they came to church. Can I get an amen? But it won't always be easy to praise Him when you're going through a storm. It won't always be easy to praise Him. Come on, somebody. When your your house is being attacked by the enemy. But if you'll praise Him, come on, somebody. It will be worth it. It will be worth it. It will be worth it. Because when I praise him, come on somebody, there will be, there will be an increase, an increase. There will be an increase of not only his presence in my life, but there's going to be an increase of hearing God's voice. Come on, can I get an amen? It's worth it. It's worth it. It it may not be easy. Listen, I want you to know it won't be easy, but it's worth it. Tell your neighbor, it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's so worth it. It may, by, it may not be easy sometimes to give more. Whoa, Pastor, hold up. What you talking about? What you talking about? How many guys know giving isn't just money? Giving can mean a lot of different things. And But I will tell you now, it won't be easy always to give more. I always to give more. Listen to me. A lot of people want to receive more. If you want to receive more, you get to sow more. It won't be easy. It won't always be easy to give more. It won't be always to give, e- easy to give more. It's amazing how so many people just get in this religious r- ritual even in their giving. Now I'm talking about money. Tell you, he's talking about money right now. And the doors are locked. You ain't leaving. Amen. Lock the doors real quick. Just kidding. It, it, won't, it won't be easy to give more. It won't be easy to give more. Listen, every year I, I want there to be an increase in what Becky and I give. If I, what I gave last year, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. It, it ought to be bigger this year. And it ought to be bigger the next year and the next year and the next year. Are y'all hearing me? I always try to outdo what I used to give. That's just me. I mean, maybe your goals ain't there. That's okay. Maybe your goals are level five, but mine's always at a 10. Just want you to know. That's the way Pastor Paul. Pastor Paul don't do small. I just do big. Can I get an amen? Go big or go home. Come on, somebody. Amen. I just had to throw that in there. Hallelujah. But it won't be easy. It won't be easy to stretch to stretch and give more but I want you to know something listen to me the the growth and harvest will be worth it come on somebody it will produce a growth and harvest and so if I'm going to get an increase in harvest how many guys know it's worth it but I'm not doing it just for the harvest though the harvest is awesome I'm doing it because listen to me I want to give as much as I possibly can back to the Lord because he's done so much for me can I get an amen Come on, y'all give the Lord a hand up in here. God is so good. Tell your neighbor, it won't be easy, but it's worth it. It won't be easy. And I just got two more examples real quick. I got to get these out, but I want you guys to hear it. Maybe three, maybe four, maybe five. But anyways, but listen to me. It won't, it won't be easy. And y'all can hear my heart. Listen. It won't be easy to, to serve in church more. Oh, my. I went there. Yes. But the joy, but the joy in helping others. It's so worth it. The joy in getting to know others, the joy of helping others and see other people come to know Jesus. Listen to me, it's so worth it. It's worth it. every step I took in serving Him. Can I get an amen? It's, it's not always easy to, to stretch and how many guys know even share Jesus? But expanding His kingdom is all worth it to me. Advancing His kingdom is all worth it to me. Remember, I've shared with you, church, listen to me. If you are a Christian, I want you to know something. Listen to me. We're supposed to be populating heaven while we're still on earth. You can't populate heaven when you get to heaven. You can only populate heaven while you're here. 
And we should be sharing Jesus. And it's amazing how this is the thing. This is the thing. Can I just share a pastor's heart for a moment? I just a pastor's heart for a moment. So that, that way you guys will go, it didn't sound very anointed. Okay, all right. I said it's my heart, my heart. But you know what? It is, is going to be anointed. Hallelujah. My heart is this. Listen to me. Listen to me. Christians ought to be sharing Jesus, not talking about the problems they see in the church. Or even in the world. Do you know what? You may not like what you see, but listen to me. You have to look in the mirror and ask you, do you like what you see there first? Trying to to tell everybody else how to get it right. You better make sure you're getting it right. And maybe, really, the truth is, I've shared this with you guys before. The truth is, if we want to turn the lights on in the world, we need to turn it up inside of us first. And so in the stretch, in the stretch, listen to me, I'm just going to tell you now. In the stretch, God, God is going to put it on your heart to share Jesus with people. He's going stre- to stretch, he's going to stretch, he's going to stretch, he's going to stretch you. And when he stretches you, he, he allows you to reach where you couldn't reach before. That's why we started Embrace Grace. He's allowing us to reach where we never reached before. That's why we're doing, listen to me, that's why, that's why we have live stream, because he's allowing us to reach where we never reached before. Come on, somebody. It's all on the stretch. It won't be easy, but it's worth it. Now, I don't mind when it's not easy, because how many guys know there's always going to be resistance before you, before you see the result? I know there's always going to be struggle before you see the strength. I have no problem with that. I, I always know there's going to be a battle before the victory. I have no problem with that. Come on, somebody. I already, I already know there's going to be a storm before I see, before I get to the other side. I already know that. I know that. But listen to me. Here's the deal. It, 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 it won't be easy because the enemy is coming against me. I get that. But we shouldn't be coming against each other. I'll fight the devil in faith. I'll fight. I'll get up. I'll, 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 y'all don't even know. Pastor Paul's a fighter. I'll just tell you that right now. I couldn't be on this boat by winning fire. I'm a fighter. You, and I tell my wife, I tell you, you do not want to push the wrong button with me. I will fight. I am not afraid of anybody, including the enemy. But I also want you to know this. I also want to, I also want to fight God's way, not mine. Now, when I was in the world, I fought out of the flesh. But now that I am a pastor, a Christian, I fight out of faith. And if I could fight good when I was in the world, I better fight a whole lot better for Jesus. It won't be easy, but it's worth it. And so sometimes, listen to me, you just, you just got to keep moving forward. Come on, somebody. Tell your neighbor, keep moving forward. Come on. Mm-hmm. See, it won't be easy. It won't be easy sometimes. It's not, it is. It's not always easy to step out on faith. But to reach a God-given goal or dream is worth it. It is so worth it. It's so worth it. You can't get there any other way. There's going to be a time that he's going to stretch you, and you're going to have to step out on faith. God put it in your heart. God put it in your heart. I'm glad you can hear, but now can you do? A lot of people can hear it, but they can't do it. And a lot of times the reason they can't do it is because they're doing what somebody else said instead of what God said. I've learned, I've learned, I've learned ever since I was a a two-year-old Christian. I've learned. I I take the advice of others and I leave it at that. And you ever heard the saying that sometimes you've got to just eat the fish and spit out the bones? And I will take it take so much and the rest I just spit out because I know what God said. And listen to me, I need to learn how to be dependent upon Jesus and hearing his voice, not just the voice of others. Though I will value voices who are trusted. Are y'all hearing me? And your listen to me, trust is developed over time, so you've got to have to prove it. When I trust it, I believe it. Amen. Or I value it, I should say. Amen. So let me move on. There's one last example I want to give you. Listen to me, it's not always easy. It's not always easy to listen to me, to be in church more. It's not. I understand that. I understand that. And some people say, Well, Pastor, you don't understand. You know, I gotta work seven days a week. I gotta do this. I gotta do that. I got a job. I got I got another job on the side. I'm doing this. I'm trying to do all these different things. It's hard for me to get it here. It's hard for me to do it. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but let me tell you something. The spiritual growth is worth it. The divine results are worth it. 
Come on, somebody. They're worth it. They're worth it. You know, maybe what you're doing is you're, you're running, you're working so hard, you're trying to fix things when the entire time, if you would just allow God to fix what he needs to do inside of you, it might fix everything else around you. Often I have found that it's not that people need to make more money. I found that they just need to learn how to manage it. And here you learn how to manage it, meaning you learn how to steward it well. Come on. You're putting in extra hours when really you just need to learn to sow seed. Well, I'm preaching right now. Amen. I'm for real. If I could, mm. Woo. I'm telling you. That's what changes lives. And I learned that a long time ago. I've learned that I'm not going to work for money. Money's going to work for me. Come on, somebody. Money ain't my God. Jesus is my God. I serve Jesus, and Jesus takes care of all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. But if you want to keep doing it your way, God will let you. But if you do it his way, watch. Supernatural results begin to happen in your life. What you couldn't do in the natural, God does supernaturally. And so I don't know about you. I don't want just natural results. I want supernatural results. Well, I'm preaching real good right there. I don't know who that was for, but that was for somebody. Amen. Tell your neighbor, it won't be easy, but, but it's worth it. Amen. It is. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go back. We're going to go back to, to talking about um, Joshua and the Israelites. We're going to come back to there because I, I just really want to point out a few more things as we, we wrap up the series. Uh, remember that the Israelites to catch some people up to speed in here. The Israelites, um, they needed God to make a way for them to cross the Jordan River, just like he made a way for their parents back at the Red Sea. And so here's the thing. Um, as soon as the priest, this is the powerful thing, as soon as the priest carrying the Ark of the Lord stepped into the river, I shared that with you last Sunday, as soon as they stepped into the river, God parts the waters and Joshua and the Israelites cross over on dry ground as soon as they step into the water how many guys know that was a step of faith how many guys know that was a stretch that was a stretch they had to step into the water the waters have not parted yet but I'm stepping into the water have you ever felt like God's asking you to do something but you want to see him do it before you do something some of y'all caught that I know that that sounds like some weird grammar but you guys caught that perfect example. God, I, I want you to help me with my finances. Okay, well, I'm going to give you a seat. No, I just want you to help my finances. Okay, but I'm going to give you a seat. Now you got to do something with the seed. You got to sow it. I'll give you the harvest, but now you got to do something with it. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so this, this is a powerful thing. This is a powerful thing. Uh, meaning, meaning this, I want you guys to see it this way. Because I want to be careful. I don't want you guys to think you can you can't work up anything. How many of you guys know God's already got it prepared for you? He, he's just trying to take you through the steps that it takes to get you to what he's already prepared. So I don't want you to think God's God, if you do this, God's gonna fix something. No, listen to me. All you're gonna do is you're going to allow your steps to be ordered of the Lord. And when your steps are ordered of the Lord, He's gonna lead you to what He's already prepared. I want to clear that up. Can I get an amen? Meaning that it's works of grace, not law. So I don't want anybody to think that it's works of grace. It's worth of gra- it's works of grace. Faith is honestly, faith is actually a response to what grace has already what grace has already done. That's the real bit. But if you get technical about the definition of grace, faith is actually just a response to what grace has already done. God, that was a rich nugget. I don't know if some of y'all caught that. I'll, I will preach on that one time. I'm telling you. And so, and so listen to me, they're, 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 they had to take that step of faith and there's a stretch, there's a stretch happening. So let me give you point number one. Let me get point number one. If you take notes, write this down. Watch this. To see, to see greatness grow, to see greatness grow, you have to go through a stretching process. To see greatness grow, you have to go through a stretching process. I'm going to explain that in just a moment in, in, in a simple format. But I want you guys to know, remember, I want to get, make sure everybody in the room knows where we're at. Remember, remember, here's the Israelites, here's Joshua. Joshua is now the leader. 
Moses has passed on. He's gone. They, 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 God parts the water. They step into the water. God parts the water. He, he moves the obstacle that's in front of them. They begin to walk across. The priests who are carrying the, the ark, um, uh, who are carrying the ark, they go out to the middle. And God has now went from wet to dry ground. Now they're walking on dry ground. The priests are standing in the middle of the river. And then they stop and they stand there. So now they can allow the Israelites to pass and go by and make sure they get to high ground. Okay? So here's where we're at. Here's where we're at. Now we're, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna start reading from Joshua 4, verse 10 through 11. Joshua 4, first, uh, chapter 4, verse 10 through 11. So let me repeat the point one more time. To see greatness grow, you have to go through a stretching process. We'll say that again. To see greatness grow, you have to go through a stretching process. That simply means, I told you I'd simplify it for you. That simply means, and this is so powerful, the seed of greatness that God has put in you will grow in the stretching process. Did y'all get that? The seed of greatness that God, listen to me, he's already put it in you. It will grow in the stretching process. Greatness grows out of a spiritual stretch. Greatness grows out of a spiritual stretch. If you want to see it, you're going to have to stretch for it. Come on, somebody. I'm I'm serious. I'm about to spit all over the place and preach and wake y'all up. I'm telling y'all. If you want to see it, talking about greatness, if you want to see it, you're going to have to stretch for it. God, this is good stuff. If you want to reach it, you're going to have to stretch for it. Are y'all hearing me? Oh, this is powerful. So let's read Joshua 4, 10 through 11. Mm -hmm. All right, it says this. And then we're going to jump down. I'm going to jump down to verse 14 after that. But watch this, verses uh, 10 through 11. It says this. The priests who were carrying the ark stood in the middle of the river until all the Lord's commands that Moses had given to Joshua were carried out. Meanwhile, the people hurried across the riverbed. I'm going to pause there just for a moment. Meanwhile, the people hurried across the riverbed. They hurried. They hurried. They didn't slow down. They didn't take time to fast. This is not the time to fast. This is the time to feast. I just want to help somebody out up in here. They hurry. This ain't time to slow down. This is time to speed up. This ain't time to take baby steps. It's time to take some adult steps. Because you're in a stretch. Tell your neighbor it's in the stretch stretch. So meanwhile, the people hurried across the riverbed. Side note, the people, I love the fact, I love the fact that, number one, that they didn't slow down, but I love the fact that they didn't give up halfway through the process. (laughs) Sometimes we get halfway there and we want to stop or we want to slow down. I gave God my all at the beginning, but can you give God your all at the end? You started out strong when you got saved, but can you, come on, stay strong and finish strong and continue to work out your salvation? Are y'all hearing me? Come on, it's time for us to grow, church. Tell your neighbor, it won't be easy, but it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's it's so worth it not to be going around the mountain again and again and again. It's so worth it not to have to cross the Red Sea and then the Jordan again. It's so great just to be in the promised land. Come on, somebody. Can I get an amen? It's just so great to get there. Come on, somebody. It's so great to be where God wants me to be. Amen. Instead of just always striving to get to a place, to get to a place. Can we just get there? I'm tired of saying, are we there yet? Like little kids in a car, are we there yet? Let's just get there and say we're here. But you're going to have to stretch for it. Come on, somebody, if you want to see it. Amen, this is powerful stuff. So they hurried, they hurried. They didn't slow down. They didn't give up halfway through the process. And here's what I love, they didn't turn back. 
They didn't turn back. They, they didn't get, did get halfway. They're in the middle. It's probably the deepest part of the river. And then these walls just got bigger on me. These walls of water just got bigger. They didn't stop and go, whoa, 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 Lord, 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 Lord. Uh, 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 uh. Start backing up. No, they saw that and said, wow. And they just kept going. We don't, we don't have time to turn back, church. Come on, somebody. We, we do not have time to turn back. There's nothing for you back there. Everything God has for you, listen to me, it's already prepared and it's, it's in front of you, not behind you. So let's quit walking backwards and just start running forward. Come on, somebody. That means you got to go for it. Tell your neighbor you got to go for it. You got to run after it, man. If you're going to run after it, you got to go for it. Go for it. You've been talking about the same thing for five years. I love you. I'm glad you thought it through, but five years is plenty of time to think it through. Just go for it. Are y'all hearing me? I've been trying to get this forever. But it's time for it to show up. Go for it. It's in front of you, though. It ain't behind you. So when I say go for it, that doesn't mean you turn around and go back. Come on, somebody. That means you go forward. And you, when you go forward, you're going to step, listen to me, you're going to step on some ground. You're going to step on some ground that you've never stepped on before. And it's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy how the unfamiliar will cause fear to try to stop you. But listen to me, you're just going to have to do it afraid. Courage is when you can do it afraid. Come on, somebody. And you just keep moving forward. Can I get an amen? Tell your neighbor you're going to get there. Now, it won't be easy, but it's worth it. Tell your neighbor it won't be easy, but it's worth it. God, it's good stuff. Uh -uh -uh. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. I'm running for it. I don't know about you. I'm running for it. I'm running for it. I'm not going to look back. I'm not going to stop. The Bible says that when you put your hand to the plow, don't look back. I may have to plow a little bit, but I ain't looking back. I'm moving forward. It won't be easy to plow, baby, but it sure will be worth it when the harvest comes. Whew, come on. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to get there. <clears throat> Man, this is, I, that's a word for somebody right there. Right there, I could feel it just shoot out of me. I felt it. That's, that's somebody right there. Watch verse 11. It says, and when everyone, when everyone was safely on the other side. I just, I, I wasn't going to do this, but I'm just going to throw it in there real quickly. I do want you guys to know. It says, when everyone was safely on the side. I love the fact that, how many of you guys know the priests were, I mean, obviously they had good, there was, there was good leadership qualities in them. Because it wasn't, listen, they knew not just for them to get to the other side. They wanted everyone to get to the other side. How many of you guys know there are leaders who call themselves leaders, but it doesn't mean they are a leader? Are y'all hearing me? A leader is somebody, listen to me, that wants to do things that are significant, not just successful. Significance means that, listen to me, it isn't just about you. It's about helping everyone. Meaning they don't want to just get to the top. They want everybody else to get to the top too. Meaning they're just not concerned about their generation. They're concerned about the next generation. Oh, don't let me get off on that. Amen. Try to call yourself a leader. If you're really a leader, you're going to try to help everyone get to the other side. Oh, don't even let me go off on that. Ooh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm. And when everyone was safely on the other side, the priests... The priest crossed over with the ark of the Lord as the people watched. As the people watched. This is powerful. I just want to point out one little thing here, one little nugget. Listen, the people watched. The people watched and they witnessed God, God do a great miracle. They saw it. God just did a great miracle. I don't know about you, Ben. If God's parting the, 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 the River Jordan, that's a great miracle. They watch, they watch, they watch God do a great miracle, but they also watch God do a great move. 
They saw God do a great miracle, but they also saw God do a great move in the people. The people hurried. They moved. And they moved in the right direction. When there's a genuine move of God, how many guys know it's always going to move you towards where God wants you to be? Oh, if I had time. If I had time, I could get into all kinds of stuff on that. So here's what I want to point out. Here's what I want to point out. The miracle, watch this. God moved. Remember, he moved. But the miracle caused great faith to grow in the people. And how many guys know it also caused a a greater reverence for God? (laughs) Come on, somebody. But it it, it was the miracle. It was the miracle that motivated them to move. (laughs) So the miracle motivated them to move. The miracle motivated them to move. And how many guys know when they moved or they stretched, how many guys know they grew in faith and they grew in reverence towards heaven? Towards God. Are y'all hearing me? And so they're like, wow, they're in awe, man. They're all of this water. Wow. Wow. How many guys know they grew in faith? Because like, wow. I mean, no one else could do this but God. But they also grew in reverence too because like, I want to get across because I want these waters to fall on me. Y'all know what I'm saying? Because ain't nothing but Jesus holding this thing up right now, baby. Amen. So they, they grew in faith, but they also grew in reverence. And in, in the King James, it, it calls it fear. But how many of you guys know that, types of, that type of fear is actually defined as reverence and awe towards God? So they, they grew. How many of you guys know that was a growing moment for them? Listen to me. Miracles, listen to me. Miracles, listen to me. When God does a miracle, it's not just so God can do great things around you. It's so God can do great things in you. Tell your neighbor it's in the stretch. Golly, man. I'm telling you, how many guys know that's growth? Amen. That's powerful. Mm -mm -mm. And so watch. Joshua. Joshua, let's go down to verse 14. I'm going to jump down to verse 14. I've got to move. It says, that day the Lord made Joshua. How many guys know it's only God who can make you something great? that day the Lord made Joshua a great leader in the eyes, in the eyes of all the Israelites. That's amazing when people can see it. When people can see it, it's not just what you say, but what they see. So he made them a great leader in the eyes of all the, of all the Israelites. And for the rest of his life, that's powerful, for the rest of his life, they revered him as much as they revered Moses. Woo! That's a powerful accomplishment. Come on, somebody. Mm-mm-mm. By the time, there's this another message. I just want to share this off of that. I believe, I believe this with all my heart. I believe in the stretch. I believe in the stretching process that we're in right now as a church. I believe God is growing up. God is growing up great leaders in our church. I said, I believe, I believe God is growing up great leaders in our church, and it will be seen. Somebody say, it will be seen. It will be seen. God is growing up great leaders in our ministries. Come on, somebody. He's growing up great leaders. Come on, somebody in our homes. He's growing up great leaders in our businesses. He's growing up great leaders in our community. He's growing up great leaders on the job. Come on, somebody. I believe we're going to see greatness come out of the stretch. And with greatness, how many guys know we're going to see God take you up? And we're going to see God pull great things out of you. Amen. Come on, somebody. How many of y'all believe that and receive that? Amen. Amen. So tell your neighbor, it won't be easy, but it's worth it. Let me get to number two so I can finish this up. Number two. It says, when you stretch, watch this. When you stretch, it will take you to higher ground. When you stretch, it will take you to higher ground. Now, I'm just going to say something real quick before I move on with this. Real quick, I just got to throw this insert in there real fast. Listen, when you stretch, it will take you to higher ground. Listen to me. Maybe you've stumbled. Maybe you've fallen along the way. Maybe you've even stopped. I want you to know something. Listen to me. The devil is a liar. No more excuses. Just get back up and start stepping again. Can I get an amen? Quit crying about it. Just get up. Do something about it. I know it hurts. I know it's painful. Nobody likes failure. But listen to me. You can't have success without failure. It comes with the package. But listen to me. There's always forgiveness for your faults. Jesus loves you. And if anybody's cheering you on, it's Jesus. And he's saying, get back up. I ain't through with you. You got breath. You got life. Get up. Walk. Watch what I can do. Come on, somebody. I can do great things in your life. Yeah, but I'm 47. It does not matter. There's still time left for you. 
I was 28 before God got a hold of me. 28 years of being stubborn. Come on, somebody. But at 28, God supernaturally got a hold of me, cleaned me up, picked me up, put me on solid ground. I started walking with Jesus, and I've been on a journey that's been so good. I don't ever want to go back. I want to keep moving forward with God. There's no better place than being with Jesus every single day. And every step I take, I want God there. God is leading me to places I could never take myself. And God has not only picked me up, but now God is moving me up to higher ground. God is no respecter of persons. What he'll do for one, he'll do for another. His promises are yes and amen. All you've got to do is receive it, believe it, and start living it. Come on, we can't. Listen, I'm glad we've learned how to declare, but let's just start demonstrating. If I confess it enough, man, you've been confessing in a pit forever. Just start climbing that doggone thing and get out of the pit that you're in. With every step, say, Jesus is on my side. He's giving me the strength. He's allowing me to do it, but I'm going to keep climbing, and I'm going to get out of this hole that I'm in. Standing there, waiting for an angel to come down and pick you up. You're not going to learn anything like that. You got to take, you got to climb that thing because in the struggle, God will give you strength. In the climb, listen to me, God is going to teach you some things. He's going to know that you better not look down because when you do, fear steps in. But if you keep looking up and you keep moving forward, faith, listen to me, begins to grow inside of you. And you start seeing that I'm getting closer to the top. I'm getting there, Jesus. And all of a sudden you realize I can make it. I can get there. And you'll get to higher ground. Come on, somebody. It won't be easy. But it's worth it. Come on, somebody. I love love people who got fight in them. Come on, somebody. They got some tenacity. They got determination. Amen. Those are people I can tell you right now, they're going to higher ground. They may fall five times, but they're going to get there. I, I'd rather work with people who are moving than people who aren't going nowhere. Woo, oh, my gosh. Lord, let me stop right there. Tell you never won't be easy, but it's worth it. So when you stretch, it will take you to higher ground. Joshua 4, 15 through 18. It says, The Lord had said to Joshua, Command the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant to come up out of the riverbed. So Joshua gave the command. As soon as the priest carrying the Ark of the Lord's Covenant came up out of the riverbed, their feet were on what? High ground. Their feet were on what? High ground. Somebody say high ground. That's where God's taking us, church. I said, that's where God's taken us, to high ground. And their feet were on high ground. The water, listen to me, the water of the Jordan returned and overload in its banks as before. Listen to me, the stretching process will take you to higher ground. It will take you to higher ground. The stretch will grow you up so you can go up to a higher level in your calling, your purpose, and your destiny. But when you stretch, hear me on this real quick. I got two little quick things. I'm going to try to do it fast. Listen to me, here's the thing. When, 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 when you're going to higher ground, how many guys know it's because God wants you to reach a higher calling? A higher level in your purpose, your calling, your destiny. What did I just share? How many guys know there's a high calling on us? That means you don't have time for, listen to me, you don't have time for, for high maintenance relationships. No, I've learned this, and some people don't understand it. Listen to me, and listen to me, let them get mad because they're going to be mad at you anyways. They're going to be mad at you when you do. When you go left, they're going to be mad at you. When you go right, they're going to be mad if you take a spin. They're just mad at you. You don't have time for high maintenance relationships. You ain't got time for that. Because why? Because God's got a higher level he's trying to take you to. He's trying to take you to higher ground. I ain't got time for that. A high maintenance relationship with somebody that wants to lean on me instead of leaning on Jesus. You better learn on Jesus, baby. I'm about to let you go. Amen. And if you fall, you got to fall like I did. You better call on Jesus. Amen. I'm going to quit babying you because that's why you're living like a baby. All you know I'm preaching right now. Amen. Ooh, if I had time to preach this, I tell you. I got time for high maintenance relationships. 
I was trying to make you happy. Come on, some of you always offended about something. Sometimes I don't like that. I don't like that. What do you like? I hope you like Jesus. Amen. Or y'all know what I'm talking about? I said, do y'all know what I'm talking about? Come on, somebody. Doesn't matter. They're always upset with you and never happy with you. Come on, somebody. They're always negative, never positive. Come on. They always take from you, never get back to you. Boy, oh boy, don't let me stop right there. Amen. I have to close. I have to close. I really do. I have to close. I'm out of time. I'll just show you this one last little thing as I close. Tell me, I ain't got time. Say, I ain't got time for high maintenance relationships. Boy, 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 boy. Why? Because I got a high calling on my life. You, You better learn. You better learn. You got a high calling on your life too. But I can't deposit that for you. Only Jesus can. But I can live it. So it says, let me just share this last little thing. I don't know, where's the light best for the camera? Probably over here, both dark. So God is wanting to take me to higher ground. I'm going to come over here because of the light. Y'all got to excuse me to put my backside in front of you. Amen. So God wants to take me to higher ground. God wants to take everybody to higher ground. How many guys know we, we have a high calling? We got an upward call. Are y'all hearing me? As, as the Apostle Paul said. And so he's wanting to take me up. He's wanting to take me up. And I'm stretching. And I'm stretching. I'm going up one step. And I'm going up the next step. But a lot of times the enemy, the enemy, he, he will he will attack while you're still in the stretching process. God's still separating you from some things. He's separating you from the enemy. He's separating you from Egypt. But he still will attack. Doesn't mean he still ain't going to come. And so, but here's what the enemy does. The enemy, I'm in a stretch, but hold my hand, babe. Hold my hand. But what the enemy does, the enemy does, he tries to he tries to come against me when he can't get me. When he can't get me, come over here, babe, step on that step right there. When he can't me, how many guys know he can't get to me? He's gonna try to get what's connected to me. And so many times he can't get to me, or if he can't get to her, he's gonna try to get what's connected to her. But this isn't a high maintenance relationship, this is a covenant relationship. So if I'm connected to somebody else, I'm about to let you go. Come on, somebody. But I'm going to stand. I'm going to stand in faith with her. Are y'all hearing me? Come on, somebody. But I have to be careful, even, even though this is my wife, even though I'm her pastor, even though I'm her husband. How many of you guys know that, that if God is stretching me and he's taking me to higher ground, listen to me, even if she's being attacked, I have to be careful not to try to pull her up. Because if I try to pull her up, I could fall. See, I can't pull her up. She's got to step up. And if she'll step up, come on, somebody, but I still stand in faith with her. Come on, somebody. She's going to make it to higher ground. Y'all give her a hand. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Come on, somebody. German. Amen. Let me just close with this. If you're in here this morning, I want you to know maybe you have listen to me, falling out of step with Jesus. Maybe you've drifted from the Lord. Maybe you've gotten off the path. Maybe you're not where you're supposed to be. Maybe you're in here, you've just backslidden. Maybe you say, I've never surrendered my life to Christ. Maybe you're watching on live stream right now. You say, Pastor, I need to come back to Jesus. Maybe you're in this room and say, I need to get my heart right with Jesus because I really want to, I really want to go and I really want to be who God wants me to be. I I don't want to live my life just existing. I want to live my life making a difference. And it starts by surrendering your life to Jesus. No matter where you're at, no matter what place you're in, it's always one step back to the Father. So if that's you in this room, if that's you watching on live stream, I want to pray for you right now. If that's you, can I just see your hand? Can you lift your hand? Lift your hand towards heaven. I see those hands. I see those hands. I see those hands. I see those hands up towards heaven. If you're watching on live stream, please let us know that today that you all received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Everybody keep your hands up to one more time. Just repeat after me as I lead you in this prayer. So, dear Lord, today I surrender my life to you. Come into my life. Make me new and help me to live for you every day in every way. Lord, I receive your love, 
your grace and your forgiveness. I believe I'm heaven bound in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all give them a hand. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah.